Hey guys, this is Becca. Um, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different, I think, from this point on uh, with my videos. I'm going to be telling a story while you watch the speed paint. Uh, now either that painting will be directly from that story, inspired by that story, or like this one, uh, I had the idea and this story, I think, matched it. So I hope you guys like it, and I'm going to do a little bit of a disclaimer right now. This is a Japanese tale called The Speaking Skull, and I have no idea how to speak Japanese. <laughs> so there are some words, um, like names and places that are Japanese words, and I have no idea what they mean, and I have no idea how to say them. So I'm going to do the best I can, and if you guys know how to do it, leave it in the comments make a video on it, I will watch it. <laughs> so without further ado, I am going to start the story. This tale comes from about the 14th century in Japan. And this starts in a temple near Nara, which is called Kankojai, where there lived a monk named Daotao. He had come from the Koma province and was a very tender-hearted and compassionate person. He noted one day that travelers had a very difficult time crossing the Uji River because there was no bridge, and so he supplied the funds from his own savings and built the bridge so that everyone could use it. Acts such as this had earned Daotao the respect and honor of everyone who had known him. One day Daotao was walking through the valley of Mount Mara with his disciple Manrayo. Quite by accident, when they glanced to the side, they saw a skull that had tumbled down from a mountain. The skull seemed to have had a hard time. It was covered in mud and looked like it had been kicked by travelers on the road. There was very little meat left to the bone, and Daotao felt sorry for the poor skull. He turned to talk to his disciple. Look at this poor skull that no one knows who it is. People have been picking on it even when it is dead. In order to protect it from this shameless behavior, we can at least put it into a high place in a tree, away from trampling feet. As his master commanded, Manrayo took the skull high up into a tree, away from where it would be seen, and covered it with branches to keep it hidden. This happened on the evening of the closing of the year. Soon after, a man appeared before the gates of Kangojai, asking to be shown inside. I have humbly come down from the mountain, with a request to see one that they called Manrayo with my own eyes. Could you please bring me before him? The man was infallibly polite in his greeting and manner. So the young man tending the gate guided him to Manrayo without a second thought. Though Manrayo had never seen this man before, he did think that his face looked oddly familiar. I am a man who is deeply indebted to you, he said. You have done me a tremendous service, and now I would like to return your generosity. Although I have brought nothing with me now, I beg for you to return with me to my home so that I may properly pre repay you. For his part, Manrayo did not understand at all. However, because the man had come with such a heartfelt enthusiasm, he felt that he must be telling the truth. How could I deny such a request from one who was so earnest? There was nothing for Manrayo to do except accompany him out of the temple gates. When he arrived at the man's house, Manrayo was presented with a dazzling feast. Please, please, take all of your favorites and lost of them. Please! While saying this, the man began to enthusiastically gorge himself. Manrayo still wondered what he had done to deserve such rich rewards, and when he asked the man how exactly he had been of service to him, he was quick to shut him up by shoving delicious delicacies at him. There seemed to be no end to the offered morsels, and so Manrayo, still a young man and given to worldly pleasures, was unable to resist any longer. All right, I will hear your reason later, but for now I will simply enjoy this wonderful feast. With that decided, Manrayo dug into the food with as much enthusiasm as his mysterious companion. Never in his life had he tasted such delicious food, and he was eager to try everything there. Between the two of them, empty plates started to pile like a mountain. And eventually, enthusiasm gave way to physics. As Manrayo could no more as Manrayo could stuff no more food into his eager body, thinking to relax. 
he was quite startled when he looked over at his companion and saw that his face had turned a violent shade of red. Honored Minrayo, he said, my brother who has murdered me has just arrived. There is no time to hesitate, but we must flee from here. Come, come with me. Hearing this, Minrayo was shocked out of his pleasant repose. What? What exactly are you saying? His voice trembled as he answered, Many years ago, my brother and I had a business together. From that business, I was able to save thirty kin of gold. My brother himself saved nothing, and thought it easier to kill me one night and steal my thirty kin of gold. For the longest time, my body rotted in the forest, until nothing was left of me but my skull. People walking along the road who saw me would only kick me out of the way, like it was a terrible inconvenience. It was horrible. But then... Beyond all hope, you came along and lifted me from the dirt and saved me from my fate. I thought about how I could possibly repay such kindness, and so, this very evening, I went to your temple to invite you to my house for this feast. To say that Manraya was surprised would be a gross understatement. But even in his panic and confusion, he realized that being caught in the house of a murderer would be very undesirable. He jumped to his feet, but he was far too slow in his escaping as the rich food slowed him down. And he heard the door creaking open as someone entered the house. The shock was too much for him, and Manrayo froze. The person at the door, however, was not the feared brother, but instead the brother's son, accompanied by his grandmother. She saw Manrayo standing rigidly in the living room, and shouted in fear, Ah! Oh! A monk! Why are you inside my house? Manrayo let the story he had just heard pour out in every detail. He turned to look over his shoulder to get a confirmation from this man who had led him here, but he saw nothing. The mother listened to Manrayo's story with much shock as Manrayo had. It was nothing like she had ever heard before, and she was very angry towards her son who had killed his younger brother. She looked down at her grandson and told him in the strictest voice, Your father is a terrible person. You must pray for the spirit of your murdered uncle and apologize for your father's crimes. The young boy did as he was directed and removed his father from his heart to be replaced by his honored uncle instead, who had been good and kind. So, I hope you enjoyed the story. Um, I know there was a little bit of a jump at one point. Uh, the cat's head. <laughs> Not my camera. That is clipped to the ceiling, mind you, um, in such a way that it was not really on the picture, it was actually um, primarily on the top of my head. So, <laughs> because I, I doubt that you want to see hair for like two minutes, um, there's a little bit of a jump, and I apologize for that. But uh, I just wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about the painting. Um, it's done on watercolor paper, Canson. Um, I probably should have, uh, stretched the canvas a little bit. Well, it's not, it's not canvas, but stretched the water paper a little bit. Um, because it did kind of bow right between the eyes. Um, as you may be able to tell. And, uh, despite that, I, I think it worked really, really well. Um, it is done in watercolor. Uh, those are Prang watercolors, I think. They're from Hobby Lobby. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. The idea came to me. Uh, yeah, see, that was that was a bit of a jump. Um, the idea came to me uh, when I was looking at the paper. I just really wanted to do a skull. Um, and it really kind of had like this old feeling to it when it was finished. So I definitely wanted it to be kind of like an old beat up skull. And when I read this story, because the one I had in mind for it originally just didn't end up working. Um, when I found this story specifically for this skull, I think it matched really, really well. And the story was a lot of fun to tell. Um, I love folklore and mythology and legends and uh, literature in general and I really really hope that you guys like this format and that you uh, will like, subscribe, comment below 
if there's any story that you want to tell me about or want me to do with a photo um well, with a painting of some sort <laughs> i'll probably keep it a speed paint unless you guys tell me otherwise and just have uh the story as a voiceover um and depending on the length of the story have it kind of just be you know me maybe talking a little bit about the painting uh if the story is like this one not going to cover the whole thing <laughs> i did do some stuff off camera after it was done it was kind of one of those points of oh it's done no it's not <laughs> it actually took me watching the video over again to realize that one eye was slightly bigger than the other um it ended up really boxy i didn't see it that way when i was painting it but um or even when i sketched part of it um but i really noticed it on the video and uh so i i did fix that and um i added a little bit more to it in the form of splotches and really all i did was i took a, a dropper um put some blue and red paint on it put a drop onto the paper and then blew it around with a straw <laughs> actually you can actually see the draw wow draw you can see the straw um up in the corner and the splatters in the background are um uh one is a acrylic spray paint that i made myself um not spray paint like as in you know but like spray paint as in acrylic paint that you spray and the other is um dilutions spray paint uh sprayable paint i should say it's actually watercolor so um if i got that in the place where i wanted to put the skull that was really easy to get rid of um but this was other stuff was not um so i hope you like the video uh if you want to get notifications then make sure you hit the bell because there will be a couple of stories that are just going to be too long to do a spray paint, do a speed paint and tell the whole story in that one bit. So there might be two or three parts. So uh, if you hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications. Um, I hope you like this and I hope you have a great day. Bye.